Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about electric mopeds. Whether you're interested in buying one, or you just kind of like the concept and you want to learn more, we're going to talk about all the advantages and disadvantages of these types of e-bikes. Now here I have a Himalaya Escape. This is pretty much a juiced Scorpion copy. It's actually a pretty good e-bike though. I did a full review of it over on Electrek. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check it out but we're gonna use this as an example to uh, talk about the different pros and cons of these types of e-bikes. Now there are a lot of advantages when you look at a moped style or mini bike style e-bike. There are two main types. There's the actual moped style, which is like the Escape here. And that follows more of a 70s uh, step through moped frame design. And then you've got more of the mini bikes that are kind of like the Super 73 styles or some of the Scrambler style bikes that have a more boxy frame. Both of them fit into this class, so we'll sort of lump those together here. Now, one of my favorite advantages of these types of e-bikes is the power and the handling that comes with them. Now, generally, all the different manufacturers that make moped-style bikes are gonna make them fairly powerful. When you have an aggressive-looking bike like this, it's a shame to put like a 500-watt motor in it. So generally, you're gonna see a minimum of 750 watts, and a lot of them obviously go much higher to get that real moped feel. Bikes like the Juiced Hyper Scorpion can go up to almost 2,000 watts. So you really get all almost a mini motorcycle feel with those types of e-bikes. The handling is also really nice. They're great for leaning really hard into the corners. You generally have these big tires like you see here that just love cornering and riding over all different types of terrain. On the Escape, it's got a little more of a knobby sort of uh, dirt tire that I like to use for riding on grass and, and gravel and those sorts of things. On the actual Juice Scorpion, it comes with a more street tire that really loves those corners. You can lean in there real hard. Different bikes have different tires and you can swap these around for the types of terrain you wanna ride on. Next, you're gonna have a full suspension bike, generally. There are some of the Scrambler style bikes that don't have rear suspension and there are some of the cheaper Scorpion knockoffs that don't have rear suspension, but you're generally always gonna have a suspension fork and usually you're gonna have suspension in the rear. Uh, here on the Himalaya we've got these dual coilovers. This is very common with these moped style bikes. For just general cruising around, it's definitely nice to have that added suspension. So anytime you hit road debris or you hop a curb or something, it's just sort of a nicer ride feel. It's a little more like a motorbike. Moped style bikes also have different seats. This is obviously not a typical bike saddle. This is a much larger, it's, it's not even a cruiser saddle. It's really its own moped style saddle. And the reason they're bigger is that you're generally not gonna pedal these bikes. You can, some of them are better than others. The Himalaya Escape, it's pretty decent at pedaling. It's not amazing, but uh, the seat just isn't optimized for pedaling. It's got a bit of a contour here, but not like an actual bicycle seat. So you are gonna have more interference when you, when you try to pedal. The other thing is that these seats aren't so adjustable. So if you're really looking for a good pedaling e-bike, mopeds aren't necessarily the way to go. You can definitely pedal them, but they're not optimized for it. So that's something to be aware of when you look into this class of e-bike. If you do really wanna pedal your e-bike, make sure you look for one that has a bit more of a taper towards the front of the seat. Uh, the Scorpion's decent. I really liked the Aerial Rider D-Class because it really tapers up near the front, but that'll help just give you a little more of a nice pedal stroke and not interfere with your thighs so much when you're pedaling. For those that just want to ride like a motorcycle though, these big comfortable seats are great for that. It just, it really feels more like a motorcycle and it's a really fun way to ride around. Don't get me wrong, I love my electric mountain bikes, my electric city bikes. Those are all great for pedaling, but when I get on a moped like this, I just want to cruise. That's really what these moped style bikes are about. They're just a lot of fun to cruise on. They're great getting around town kind of e-bikes. They can have good utility. If you look here, we've got a rack on the back. There's a place to mount a rack on the front. Most of the moped style bikes are gonna have some sort of accessory set up, whether it's lugs for mounting racks, whether it's a built-in rack. Um, but generally, these are gonna be sort of utility bikes, not anything near like a cargo bike, but because it's not a fitness style bike and it's a heavier bike to begin with, they're generally gonna give you accessory options for doing utility type cargo work or uh, baskets, that sort of thing. 
Another thing that I like about moped style bikes is generally speaking, they come with a bit larger batteries. This is not true across the board and you do need to check for your specific moped that you're looking at, but generally because it's a bigger bike, a little more powerful, they give you a little bit more battery so that the battery doesn't die as quickly. Generally, these moped bikes are also going to have better brakes. Here we've got hydraulic disc brakes and most electric mopeds are gonna come with hydraulic disc brakes. In my opinion, it's just a lot nicer than mechanical disc brakes. Both can provide strong braking force, but you generally don't have to pull as hard on hydraulic disc brakes, and you don't have the same maintenance concerns. They're just pretty much always lined up. You don't have to fiddle with cable stretch or anything like that. You're usually gonna find better lighting on these bikes too. If you look up front here, we've got a fairly big headlight. Some of them have even bigger ones. The uh, Aerial Rider D-Class I mentioned earlier, it's got that nice big headlight. The Juice Scorpion, nice big headlight. So you're generally gonna have better lighting on these because they're more of a motorcycle type bike. Speaking of these being more of a motorcycle type bike, I find that when I'm on the road with cars, I have more of a, of a road presence. I find that cars sort of give me a little more space and they almost interpret me as a motorcyclist instead of as a cyclist. You know, a lot of drivers are not super friendly to cyclists, as we all know, but when they see something like this, it doesn't quite register like, you know, some dude in spandex on a road bike that's in their way. It almost looks like a guy on a small motorcycle and drivers are familiar with that. You know, they don't see motorcycles all the time, but they accept that those things belong on the road in a way that some drivers don't really accept cyclists on the road, if you know what I mean. The last big advantage I find from these moped style e-bikes is that you can often carry more than one person. Here we've just got a single seat, but a lot of these bikes have longer banana style seats. Some of them have uh, pillion pegs in the back for carrying a passenger. And so you can often get away with carrying two people on one e-bike, which is great. You know, these are really alternative transportation vehicles. They're not just, you know, recreation. They're really a, a form of transportation. So the fact that you can actually bring a passenger around with you makes these such better utility vehicles. It's just, it opens doors for, you know, traveling around with friends or I drop my wife off at work sometimes. It's just great to use a moped to carry people. It's, it's a lot of fun to get around that way and share the experience. All right, so there are a lot of advantages I talked about uh, with moped style e-bikes, but not everything is rosy. There are some downsides and let's talk about those because it's important to know if you've never tried one of these moped style bikes and you're thinking about getting one for the first time. Now, first of all, these are incredibly heavy, all right? These bikes, they usually don't go under 70 pounds. Uh, the Juice Scorpion, it's up close to 100 pounds, I think. They have big, rugged frames, usually bigger batteries, bigger motors. This suspension is not light. All the accessories, even the big headlight, they all add weight. You know, a pound here, a pound there, it adds up. So these are big, heavy bikes, and you should know that going in. If you're used to, you know, picking up your bike and putting it in the back of your SUV or your van or something, these are gonna be harder to pick up, so keep that in mind. When you're riding, it's not such a big deal. You know, they've got a different sort of ride feel, and they don't feel as heavy as they are. If you were on a 70 pound road bike, it'd feel pretty heavy, but the handling with these bikes, they're just, you know, they're meant to feel a little more nimble. The weight's pretty low down, and so they ride well, even though they're heavier. The issue with the heavier weight though, it's really when you're moving the bike around, when you're picking it up, that sort of thing. Next, for larger riders, it can sometimes be an issue to fit on these bikes properly. Now, because you're not pedaling and because it's more of a motorcycle feel, it's not as much of an issue. It's not like on a typical pedal bike, where if you're too big, it's just not gonna work for you. You know, your knees are gonna be up in your armpits kind of thing. Because you're really using the pedals here mostly as footrests on moped style bikes, you can get away with uh, sort of longer legs or um, having a longer reach on these bikes to an extent. You know, if you're six foot nine, it's probably not gonna work for you, but you do get a little more range than a typical bike. That being said, most of these moped style bikes are not big in terms of the geometry for a rider. This is not a huge bike. It fits me great. I'm five foot seven or 170 centimeters, and you can certainly be taller. My nearly six foot uh, brother-in-law fits him just fine. But once you get too tall, these are gonna start to feel a little bit awkward. So if you're a real tall guy, a moped style bike, it might be trickier to find one that fits you. Next is maintenance. Now with a typical e-bike, if you bring it into a bike shop, they're, they're common enough now that bike shops will usually work on them for you. We've gotten past that point where a lot of bike shops didn't want to work on e-bikes. But if you bring one of these into a bike shop, you might get turned away from a few shops before you find one that'll work on it. Now these are bicycles, you know, this is very much a bicycle. It's got pedals, it's got a headset, you know, it's got bike wheels. All this is typical bike stuff. The brakes, these are bicycle brakes. 
but when you bring it into a bike shop, a lot of bike shops just see a motorcycle and they say, no, we're not gonna work on that thing. They just don't wanna get involved because it doesn't look like something that they're familiar with. So know that going in, you might be doing more of your own maintenance than you would on a typical bike. There's not that much that needs to be done to these, but it's something to consider going into this. All right, I think that about covers it. In my opinion, moped style e-bikes are a ton of fun. They're great for recreation. They're great as alternative transport. They have really good utility. They can carry passengers. They're powerful, they're fast. I mean, this guy, so it comes out of the box at 22 miles an hour, but you can edit the settings and get it up to about 30 miles an hour. So as alternative transport, these are really quite useful. You know, not a lot of e-bikes go that fast, but these moped style bikes, they're fast and powerful. So I really think this is a great type of e-bike and it could fit a lot of riders, but you should know going in these advantages and disadvantages because like any e-bike, they're not for everyone. But I do think that for everyone, there's an e-bike out there for you. Last but not least, before I go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Greg Smith. So congratulations, just let me know where to send your book and you can choose from any of my four books. That's DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you'd like and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win one of my books for free, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.